So today we're going to go over the biomechanics of racket sports. Now this will apply to numerous sports, whether you're playing tennis or badminton, even pickleball. Each of these racket sports have something in common. We're always utilizing our upper extremity, core, and lower extremity at the same time. So that's exactly how we're going to divide this series up. And we're going to start out with the upper extremity. You okay to get some work done today, Mickey? Yep. All right. So I'm going to get you to lie on your back first, please. We're going to get on the picture around this one. So Mickey, I have to get in the front here. Do you get me working on the area? Yeah. Okay, no problem there. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to move a little bit in a linear fashion to begin with. Now, the pectoralis muscles are really important because they contribute to the power and control of each of your strokes. You okay there? Yeah. Good. And if you're having a problem or a restriction or a muscle imbalance in this area, it's def definitely going to decrease your power. It's also going to alter your technique. I'm going to start moving in kind of a, there we go, getting a little motion in there. You okay? Yeah, that's good. Good. You also, if you have a uh, problem with the pecs, you're going to have a problem in terms of your technique actually reaching very far. And you'll also start to get compensation injuries in the shoulder, the arm, or even the wrist. Okay. You okay? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Good. Could you say that again? Guess what? <laughs> I, I, what I, think, I think your watch is talking to us it's today. talking to us. Yeah, there we go. All good. Okay, so rather than me actually doing both sides, I'm just going to do one side, but in actuality, I'm always going to work on the other side. So let's move on to your deltoid muscles. Why don't you come over the edge here a little bit? When we think of the deltoids, we probably want to do it anterior, medial, posterior. So they all come together and they actually connect down here in the deltoid tuberosity. So why don't we just start there to begin with. You okay? Oh yeah. And I'm just kind of leaning down on that one. Now the deltoid muscles are really important when it comes to stroke intensity and in terms of actually the direction of the ball when you hit it. So if you have a restriction here, it's really going to affect your accuracy. If you have a problem with the deltoid muscles, you're going to have, notice that you've got reduced power. Uh, it's going to alter your technique. You're also going to feel a bit of discomfort in the area, and you're going to have a limited reach. And again, you're going to get compensations through the shoulder, the elbow, and the wrist. Come have a seat here for a second. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to take the arm here and just kind of bring it behind here, okay? okay. So let's just... On the front here, take it behind. Oh. How are we doing there? <laughs> Feeling that one, aren't yeah. you? Okay, take it down. So before I was actually moving from down here and going up, now I'm actually doing a little bit of pin and stretch on there, locking it off. Good. Back up here. Okay, take it back one more time. Now I'm gonna go on the posterior and take it front. Cross. You got it. Feeling that there? Yeah. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. Good. Good. Now, once again, I'm only showing on one side of the body here. I'm actually going to move onto the rotator cuff muscles here. So, we'd be talking about the infraspinatus, supraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. So why don't we start up here and actually just move up a little bit onto the supraspinatus. Let's take it arm down and across in front. Pull it over. Doing okay there? Yep. And back. And again. Good. So this could have a huge effect on your performance, increasing your accuracy, power, and it'll also help you to prevent a lot of injuries. You okay there? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm going to have you actually lie on your back again, please. I'm just going to move up under the subscapularis here. Okay, so you 
Okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just go on the inside here. Now, technique-wise, I'm not making a fist. I have an open hand, and it's flat. If I start going with my thumb in here, does it feel pretty kind of pokey? Yeah. 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 Okay, but if I go from here... Yeah, it's nice broad. Nice broad contact. Yeah. Opens it up. Okay. So this is subscapularis. Start putting a little bit of circumduction in there. You okay? Oh yeah. Good. Good. All right, and again, we would work Good. on both sides. Don't be so inconsistent. I keep touching your watch today. I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, lie on your side, face over. Okay, and I just go a little behind here. Take it down. How we doing? Good. So when we're here, and I start moving again, getting a little bit of motion there. This this is it's intense, but it's not too bad. Not as much as with. But as soon as I start getting some yeah. circumduction in there, and as I've mentioned in other videos, when it comes to fascia, fascia fuses through all adjacent structures. It's not just a matter of a muscle contracting and the belly of the muscle contracts and we get, you know, the origin and insertion moving towards each other. We've got fascia infusing everything, so we have to be able to get in there and actually release restrictions in that. You okay? Yeah. Yeah, it's Good. much better. That's easy now. Quite yeah. Good. Okay, go face down now. This, uh, thanks for asking. Inflection in your <laughs> Yeah, a little bit of tone there. Good. Okay, get up here now again. Oh. Just a little bit there. Little nuances like this make all the difference in the world. What do you feel is different there? I feel like it's getting deeper, but it's also going through the movement of the muscle. Yeah. But it's not just linear. No. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to get you to uh, just have a seat again, please. Ooh. Now, we all want to get on the forearm flexors and extensors. Kind of work our way around here a bit. You okay? Yeah. Uh, table down here a little bit. Common flexor tendon, common extensor tendon. We'll start here with the common flexor tendon. Just kind of work our way down. Feel any kind of a restriction in here. Just get to my side of my hip. Pick this here, push against here. Push. You okay? <laughs> right. Back and push. Push, doing okay there? Yeah. So I work my way all the way down the arm and I get on the extensors. And of course, they are the antagonists of each other. So if you have a restriction on one side, it's definitely going to inhibit the strength of the other side. It's motion, it'll really change your accuracy, your, it'll affect your ability to grasp the racket, your grip strength, everything. Doing okay? Oh yeah. What are we doing here? Oh. On the supinator here. Good. Oh. Good here. You knew I was going to stick something else in there. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, this is good. Yeah. 
feel a restriction there. This here, when we start getting that in there though, yeah, it's it just changes it completely. Oh, completely different. Yeah. So back in here again. Take it out here. Okay. Just take it in there a little bit. Good. Doing okay? Oh yeah. But you can actually feel one layer of tissue gliding over the other. You can actually feel, it's like you can go down here in the pro, pronator tears here, feel in between, median nerves right in the middle here. Okay. And if we go in there and I take it out here and I'm trying to push it apart, that's one thing. But if I go in here and then I take it like this, yeah. I can actually feel more of the nerve gliding through the tissue. Okay, good. So we're talking about grip strength. One of the things we have to do is we actually have to get on some of the intrinsic muscles of the hand. In here, kind of work our way around. All of these muscles play a huge role in all racket sports. If you have a problem with the, any of the muscles in your hand, it's going to reduce your control. Obviously, it could cause pain in the area, but it's going to affect your grip strength. Basically, limit finger motion. And once again, we're talking about something wrong with the shoulder creating problems farther down the kinetic chain, something here could change, create problems in the elbow and the shoulder. So, really important we consider that entire kinetic chain. Doing okay? Oh yeah, that's just nice. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with this situation here? <laughs> okay, Just open that up a bit, good. The thinner for most people is pretty tight. Mm -hmm. I don't like the thinner. Just kind of open that up a bit. Again, getting in and just mobilizing the joints here a bit too. So as I'm going through here, I'm demonstrating soft tissue techniques, but I would also consider restrictions in the joints thoracic spine, cervical spine, the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, and the fingers too. So as I'm working my through, way through here, if I find something is actually restricting the capsule, then I'll go back and actually address it. So this is really powerful work. And from the upper extremity, we're gonna move on to actually addressing restrictions in the core.